Hi everyone, and welcome to FAQ on file permissions. So we're going to talk about how to change file permissions using the command prompt. We know that if we say ls-l, we're going to see all of the files and folders that are in our current folder, or if we pass ls the argument of another folder, we can see the contents of another folder. What you're looking at right here are the file permissions that are the defaults. The first character in the line indicates if it's a file or a directory or symbolic link. In this case, we see a dash, which means we know it's a file. The second set of characters is going to be the file permissions of the owner of the file. So in this case, it's read, write, and a dash. This could be execute permission. If we saw an X, if we see a dash, it means we don't have execute permission. The next set is the permissions that a group has. So if you add a group to one of these files, it's the permissions for the group. The last set of permissions is for the world. So anybody else on the server would be able to read only. Now, to change file permissions, we're going to use the command schmod. This can sometimes be pronounced with a soft sh type sound or a hard ch ch type sound. I have always heard it pronounced as schmod, so that's how I'm going to pronounce it for this video. To use schmod in the traditional way, we're going to use octal. And that means we have numbers that we're going to pass it. Now, these three numbers, we're going to start with 700. Zero, zero. The way these numbers correspond to permissions is the first number is the permissions you're giving the owner. The second number is the permissions you're giving the group. And the third number is the permissions you're giving the world. So each of those correspond to these sets of characters and the read, write, and execute permissions. Now we're going to tell Schmod which file permissions we want to change. In this case, we're going to change mal. So if I do an ls-l, you can see mal's permissions have now changed. So now mal has read, write, and execute permission for the owner of the file, that's me, and nothing for anyone else. I can use different numbers here. So I could say schmod744. Now, the way that this ends up working is each of the numbers is going to correspond to a set of permissions. The most commonly seen ones that you're likely to see are zeros, which is no permission, fours, which is read only, sixes, which is read and write, and sevens, which is everything. You can calculate these permissions based off of a binary calculation that I went over in the TLDR for the week. But basically, if you want to give a permission, say read permission, it would be a one. If you don't want to give a permission, say execute permission, it would be a zero. And so in this case, this would translate to one, one, zero, which in binary translates to a six, which is how the permission is calculated. So we can see that this one, one, one here with read, write, and execute is actually the equivalent of a seven, and that seven is the one that we used here. So can you guess what uh, permissions mal is going to get with seven, four, four? Take your guesses. Pause if you need a minute to calculate it. Okay, so mal gets all permissions for the owner, read permissions only for the group and the world. So you can see how we were able to change these permissions 
if you want to see it a little bit more closely, you can see how we were able to change the permissions for Mal. Mal has also changed color because it is now considered an executable and we can actually run it. So this is the basics of how we change permissions for a file. If you are going to be creating any scripts, you're going to need to change the permissions the first time you run a script. In Linux, by default, files are not executable and you have to make them executable before you try to run them. Please let me know if you have any questions.